Hello, hello everybody. Um, a friend of mine <coughs> contacted me the other day after watching the first video I put up about um, NCC 220 amplifier modules and he said you need to expand on that slightly um, uh, because uh, there's some discrepancy about the case and one thing or another. Um, so this is this is my my case. Um, I had a load of these built many many years ago. Uh, in effect, it's just an aluminium extrusion, which they use in double glazing. Actually, it's pretty heavy duty, um, but it serves very well as a case for many projects over the years. I've put preamps in them. I've put power amps, as you can see, all bit thrown together. Uh, but it's only this particular, these pair are only for my use. Um, but to give you some insight, uh, some further thought um, about the NCC 220 or QDOS amplifier module, I mentioned that um, this is a good heat sink. And to give you some idea, I mean, this has been on uh, 24 hours. And um, we now have near us down at 35 degrees at the extremities of the case. So that begs the question, what's going on inside? Uh, it's more of interest than anything else. Uh, it's, again, it's not technical, it's just a bit of interest. There's plenty of people out there that are far, far better qualified than me. Um, but we've seen that when the chassis is out of the case and we set it up out of this case we were getting 20 around about 24 millivolts of bias now that it's been in the case for 24 hours and warming through so the whole case was 35 degrees thereabouts we're now up to 37 we're still well under our 50 millivolt ideal uh, setting so we're well within spec but i'm just going to go and see what the bias setting is inside here at this present second so i've got to power it down it's 35 degrees at the moment and we're going to see what those output transistors are doing now so i'm just going to power off unplug and I'll just slide this chassis out and now we can see they're 45 degrees 44 45 degrees so it just goes to show how this builds up and this is quite warm to the touch um, so I'm just waiting for this to decay <coughs> bear with me Just check. Yeah, I think we're pretty safe. Uh, so I'm now going to whack this over to some milliamps. And as we did before, I'm trying to do this pretty rapidly because the heat, I'm trying to keep the heat to give you some idea of what we're pulling now. That's nice on there, snug, nice and clear. Reconnect this. We've changed the meter over. And now let's see what our bias is after 24 hours. And it's running, as we know, yeah, that's how fast it drops away so as soon as you take it out of the case. Um, So 140 and climbing. I believe I uh, done this previously when I first bought, built these. And I was at about after 24 hours inside the case. I run a couple of wires out through the case. So it was all in situ. And I think it was about 160 milliamps of bias at a steady state when the whole thing was at 
35 degrees. Uh, so imagine two of these in a stereo configuration in an amplifier. Let's say I'm going to suggest an AP250. You've got two of these, um, big transformer, big smoothing caps. Uh, it will generate uh, quite some heat once set up at 120 milliamps outside the casework. With the chassis on set up on the bench, this is the reason we set it up at 120 milliamps. We know when we put this back into the case over a period of hours, 20 odd hours, 25 hours, that reading will climb and climb and climb and climb to around about the 160 milliamps, I believe. Um, and the offset also rises slightly because of it. So a friend of mine said, you need to flesh this out a bit. This is all very well bleating on about how to set up the bias and DC offset. He said, but couldn't you help me out? I mean, he knows nothing about electronics. So I said, as a bit of entertainment, if you like, yes. So, so this is <clears throat> a monoblock amplifier. We have a toroidal 300 VA transformer. It has twin secondaries. Uh, 35 volts, or oh, sorry, a bit of shake there. 35 volts, you've got 4.3 amps per winding. So you've got 240 goes in, you've got 35, not 35 comes out and goes into this bank of six capacitors. And at the beginning, they're rectified with these diodes. Uh, these capacitors are uh, 10,000. Oof. at 63 volts and I think 35 volt secondaries um, these this runs at uh, 50 50 volt rails to be of interest um, actually we can do that as a non-technical piece of information Bear give me a second we can just do that if I get me meter I think it's over 50 volts actually, 50 volt rails. Go to DC. So our zero is going to be there. And our positive, I'm just going to clag on the bottom of this spade here, if I can get on it. There we go. We'll plug it in. Hopefully this is still all on camera. I just need to shuffle a bit about a bit. There we go. And we're going to find out what the railway... There you go. So we've got the DC rail voltage is plus and minus 53, nearly 54 volts. I think that's about maxed out um, for these voltages on uh, this configuration of set up for the NCC220 or QDOS. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to go much more than that. Um, you know, a couple of little transistors struggling here. This this transistor here, I think it's a 6637. Um, again, I don't want to get technical. That transistor there, when you touch it, it feels red hot. But when you actually put the gun on it, it's only actually 24 degrees. Uh, so that one there was at the 736 can't remember 24 degrees but when you when you put your finger on it it feels red hot but it's not really it's just the the small surface area um anyway let's get back to this so um i'm gonna power this off now as a point of interest that's what the rail voltage of this particular amplifier is uh, <clears throat> so we got this capacitor bank 30,000 oops of capacitance per rail so you've got a negative rail this side the positive side is that side and you have a zero the green down the center that's the center zero volts here zero volts here these two are separate and fed back to the clean end of this this is known as a dirty end where all the noise is this is known as the clean end up this end after it's been through all this filtration and as before 
we have output and zero volts back to there, or negative for the speaker terminals. The chassis is earthed via mains earth here. Uh, let me disconnect that, make it safe. Always work safe. If you're not sure, fingers out of the way. I've had a few. I've had a few go up on me and let the uh, that magic smoke out, that electrical smoke. It's um, wonderful stuff. So the chassis itself is just a piece of three mil aluminium bent up, and on the bottom years ago I had various holes drilled and um, countersunk so that I could put various bits of kit in here. Uh, and it, you end up with a colander chassis in the end. But that's a quick outline. We've covered the, the amp module, the power supply, the transformer. There's a bit of wiring, a bit of jiggery pokery. There's nothing difficult in building one of these. Oh, sorry, I'll keep hitting this camera. So we're now going to go on and show you that the actual case. The case is just a piece of aluminium extruded. It is, I think it's, uh, I don't know if we can see that, well it, it's not It's not focusing is it, you swine, this is, there we go, uh, so it's 80 by something like 200, and this particular one I just happen to know, it's 320 long. Uh, I should have had them made a bit longer actually, uh, 350 or something like that, um, because they'll ease comfortably go on a rack and I could have, I could have got more in them. Uh, this covering is literally, I mean this is 20, say 20 years old, this is just a bit of paste I think, that, that'll come off. Uh, but these, this is just vinyl wrap that I got from the auto trade, we have a vinyl chap up the road. Um, again, this is 20 years old, you wouldn't believe it. Um, it's been kicked and these have been loaned out to people, to many people over the years. Um, and it works a treat. So, there's the amp. Here's the case, it's quite heavy. That just slides in like that. We'll flip it over and the whole thing it's held together. I used to put a big bolt through the middle uh, years ago, but I don't bother anymore. It's all earthed out correctly. It's quite safe. And the whole thing goes together with some screws. Whack that down. This is just a copy of the name uh, f way of doing it of years and years ago. And there you have um, the final product really, I suppose, if you want to call it like that. Um, works a treat. Uh, so this is Laverda, the implementer sign off again. Um, I look forward to doing some more of these. It's uh, It keeps me occupied on these windy wet nights at the, in uh, February, the late February 2020. So I wish you all the very best and you keep well and fit. Goodbye for now.